Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be welding on these end caps on the 45s of this overhead eight inch entryway that has got a clearance of 15 foot inside to inside after the gates are installed. I'm also gonna be showing you a little trick I learned on the pipeline about welding with a fixed lens. That means not auto darkening. On pipeline work, it's a real big deal to not arc outside the bevel. This entryway is going to be a combination of one that you've seen previously. It's going to get the six inch 45 pieces right here and right here, but it's going to get the four and a half inch OD gates from the other entrance that you've seen us build. All right, so in last week's video, we got our saddles cut for our uprights and our 45s cut for our overhead. The first thing I did to kick this day off was I went ahead and trimmed down one of these uprights with my pipe beveling machine. That's what this is. This is a pipe beveling machine. We use them a lot on pipeline work, but obviously they come in handy on any type of pipe work. This here is a Matthew Deerman brand. Anytime that we're cutting pipe with some type of coating on it, it's always good to make one round with the cutting lever on. That way it blows some of that paint or coating off and then go around and cut it. But either way, even if we're cutting bare pipe, we still like to make one round to preheat the pipe and then make our cut. The thicker the pipe, the slower you go to get better preheat or even go around two or three times. That is not normal. So the reason that I trimmed this down was because it was longer than 20 foot. The goal was to have 20 foot from the underside of this overhead to the bottom of this upright on both sides. The other side was already right at roughly 20 foot. So I wanted to cut this one down so it would match. That puts us with five foot in the ground and then 15 foot of clearance underneath our main overhead piece right here. So one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is we're actually building this entryway in three parts or it'll end up being in three parts that way it can be hauled to somewhere in texas which to me is pretty daggum cool all right here i am picking up some 3 16 plate with my gin pole that i have hooked up to my 95. this gin pole is super handy if you're interested in building your own gin pole you can find prints of the gin pole on our website aeroswelding.com forward slash shop under digital prints this thing is a very very inexpensive way to have a lifting apparatus i did want to point out a couple of things that are different since we've made prints i've added a half by three plate on top just to make this thing a little bit stronger one thing to know about me is i uh, tend to try a lot of different things and lift things that i probably shouldn't so all that to say is I'm constantly modifying my lifting apparatuses to lift what I need to. But anyway, I just wanted to point out a couple of differences, but the prints are of the basic idea, which is essentially what we got here without that top plate. And I believe the prints come with a parts list, if I'm not mistaken, that has a winch involved and a pulley system up here which is super handy but with the stuff that i've been doing i've noticed that i really enjoy not having to worry about power so that's why i don't have the winch on i really enjoy using this come along because i can fine tune stuff better i can like this pipe for instance to move it i can be up here close to it i can leave my truck where it's at i can be up here close to my piece of pipe and i can run that chain I can lift it up just enough. That's what I mean by fine tune. And then I can move my pipe back and forth just by moving my, my chain where I'm picking it up at because that puts it at an angle and that helps me move my pipe. Uh, whenever I'm fine tuning stuff like this entryway, trying to get this piece square and whatnot. But um, I just wanted to show you the gin pole and any little changes you might notice in case you buy the prints. and. You're like, man, that's not what I thought I was buying. So any modifications that I've done, it's just probably usually unnecessary is uh, kind of what I'm getting at. But I've found that simple is, is more or less better for the stuff that I do or have been doing. Once I got my plate over closer to where I was working at, my goal was just to cut out some rectangles by using the average measurement of the 45 cut on our eight inch. Nine by 13. All right, so this here is called a slang term is whiskey stick, but uh, it's got magnets on it and it helps 
just make a straight cut with a hand torch. The way to use it is to set it down like this at an angle, line up your mark, and then rock it back on your magnets. Sometimes it doesn't get straight, so you gotta tap it around, but you can always do a test swing with your torch, like so. Once I got my rectangles cut out, I put them up against the 45 and marked. Actually, before I marked it, I actually had to do some grinding on my 45s to get my plate fitting better. For some reason, whenever I laid out my 45s in previous videos, and even whenever I used the template on this entrance, I had to grind right here on the bottom of my 45, and then I believe I had to grind at the other end also. So for whatever reason, I had to do some grinding to get it fitting good so I got it fitting good put my plate up there and then took my soapstone and marked all the way around one of the reasons I like this soapstone that we carry in the a Ross welding store is because it's flat and it helps get in like tighter areas like in the throat if you will of our 45 uh, because you don't have to sharpen it and it's already thin that's one of the reasons I like using this soapstone it doesn't work good for everything I still believe in a thick soapstone from time to time but it is handy for situations like this and I like it because you don't have to sharpen it so that's why you'll see me using it 90% of the time but that's not to say that I don't use the thick ones. Once I got it marked I went ahead and cut both of my ends out. cleaned them up and then I even had to do one more trim on each one to get it fitting properly the way I like it to be fit which is what I call corner to corner which is essentially just giving you a spot to weld and that way you know you're getting full penetration or pretty close to full penetration all the way around because I am going to be sanding these down. You can actually kind of see it here in the footage I got of me welding these caps on. You can actually see where I've got a little, I call it like a bevel, but it's it's because the plates are corner to corner. So you got a little nice little corner to weld into. And uh, again, just makes it more enjoyable and you feel like you're, you know, you're actually joining the two pieces properly. Or at least for me, it makes me feel like I can sand on it and not worry about sanding all the weld off. The welding rod will dig like it's made to dig into the metal so it's not a big deal if you don't have a good corner everywhere in fact there was places on these plates where the corner wasn't as thick because on something like this i'm not going to take the time so but i feel confident that i was getting penetration enough to where whenever i went to sand it down it wasn't gonna sand all my weld off i am welding with 532 80 10 I get asked that question a lot about what I weld with on fence or these entryways and stuff. 
I prefer 532-8010, but 532-6010, 332-7018, 1-8-7018, weld uphill on this stuff. You can weld uphill, downhill, on fence, it doesn't matter. And you don't have to have welding certs to weld on fence. All right, now let's weld that bottom and I'll show you what I learned on the pipeline when it comes to welding with a fixed lens or an auto lens whenever you're brother-in-lawing pipe. If you don't know what brother-in-lawing means, brother-in-lawing a piece of pipe means that you've got a welding partner. So your welding partner will weld one side of the pipe and you'll weld the other. Most generally it's on 12 inch and up. Anything 12 inch and under, most likely you're gonna be able to weld it by yourself. I won't get into much detail on that in this video, but whenever your brother in lawing pipe, sometimes when you get to that bottom, whether you're using a fixed lens or an auto darkening lens like I'm using today, sometimes you can't see where you need to start because your, your welding partner is still welding. And if you're using a fixed lens, you can't see where you need to start. Or if you're using an auto lens, sometimes your auto lens goes dark because of their welding arc. So to combat that, what I learned on the pipeline was to use their welding arc to strike your rod. So you'll go as close to them as you need to, to where you can see the end of your rod, strike up and then drag up to where you need to start welding and take off welding. Another option is to stick your rod, and this only works if your machine does not uh, have a hot start, I believe, something along those lines. It does, this doesn't work with all welding machines, but a lot of these Lincolns like mine, it works on. But you can stick your rod. I've got my hood up right now, because if I got a fixed lens and I can't see, I keep my hood up. You stick your rod, like so, your machine fires up, you put your hood down, and then you break arc and take off welding. So that's another thing you can do to try to keep from arcing outside the bevel. On this stuff, it's not a big deal, but on pipeline work, it's a big deal to make sure you stay inside the bevels. All right, we got her all sanded down smooth on both ends. Stay tuned for next week's video where we're gonna get everything fit up, lined up, and tacked off that way we can start fitting up our six inch that goes right here at a 45. thanks for watching thanks for all your support if you have any questions you can text them to 405-643-7176 have an awesome weekend and remember learn something every day